Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, here to bring you another gear view, and today, talking optics, this guy right here, which is the Bushnell Nitro 4x16x44. I originally came across this optic when I was looking for an optic for a turnkey precision rifle that will get you consistently out to about a thousand yards for under about 1300 bucks. And kind of looking around different things, a lot of optics out there, if they perform, they'll either have exposed turrets that may or may not work that well, or the reticle maybe isn't conducive to shooting that far out, or they're just a fixed power. And this, for me, with respect to price, kind of brought a lot of that stuff together and brought a lot of value to this rifle. And consequently, rifle package. Stats-wise on this guy, about 14 inches long to about here. This right here is a sunshade. You can take it on and off. It also comes with your lens covers. You can flip these guys up, protect your lenses when you're not using it. Weight-wise, just under 24 ounces, about 23 and a half. And back here, we can adjust our magnification anywhere from four up to 16. And this model is cap turrets. So under here, we have our elevation. Right here, we have our windage. And on the other side, we can adjust parallax anywhere from about 15 yards out to three, and then kind of straight into infinity. But by the stats, that's what we got. I've had the opportunity to run this optic quite a bit. There's some things I definitely do like about it, and other things, not so much. Going out, getting it zeroed, it was really easy, had no issues whatsoever, and got it on paper, made my adjustments, had the rifle zeroed, no problems. I then actually went out and took a four-day precision rifle course with K&M. Amazing course, if you ever get the opportunity, would definitely suggest going out there. Incredible facility too. And day one took this guy out to a thousand yards. Granted, there's a bunch of variables in there to include the rifle, the ammunition, biggest variable, myself, the shooter. But this optic absolutely held its own over the course of that. And I really appreciate that, so backing up a second, a number of different reticles. The one I chose is the Mill Deploy. Essentially kind of a Christmas tree reticle and you have half mill and then one mill increments going down vertically as well as some horizontally and then kind of branching out, you also have some references also. It is not super busy in that like, Chorus, while if you're good with them, they're great, but they can be like overwhelming because there's so much stuff going on. And while there is a lot going on in this reticle, I didn't find it to be a disadvantage. And it actually worked really well for me. Personally, with this being a cap turret, I wouldn't really want any other type of reticle because with these being capped, well, you absolutely can keep these off and actually just turn, dial, whatever adjustments you need on there, it's much faster to work within the reticle. And since these are capped, they don't really lend themselves to that, especially since they don't have zero stops either. One of the most vital aspects of this optic is the fact that the deploy mill reticle is first focal plane, allowing you to engage targets or even mill them at any magnification. What this means is as you move the magnification, the reticle changes proportionately. So one mil will always truly be one mil. If there's something I don't care for on this optic, and granted, at the price point, it is what it is, but with these turrets, granted they're capped, not necessarily made for cranking dope on them, but when you go to adjust them, they are not very distinct. Like, you want to be able to hear and go really slow to actually try and notice when it actually clicks. The other thing I ran into is some of the adjustments, it'll want to drop back to one or the other. It'll feel like it's basically in the middle of two. And I also ran into that when I was floating the rings, trying to zero these things out, shoot my groups at 100, get a really good zero. Basically to zero them out, you undo this top piece without moving the bottom, lift the cap off, put it on, and then tighten it back down, and you've zeroed them out. Keep in mind there's no zero stop or anything like that, but problem I ran into with that is I would have a zero and I couldn't get it 
to match up. So the basically the zero mark, your little indicator line right there, the zero would not fit. It just happened to be that my zero for that ammunition that I was using was in between essentially two of the clicks and it would not go back on zero. Since then, I've actually re-zeroed with another ammo, didn't have that issue. I was actually able to get it to zero out, which was good, but that is the issue I ran into with this. And again, it's not made for cranking dope on here. They're cap turrets and you can absolutely work within the reticle. Out here today to accomplish twofold tasks. One, I wanted to see how this Gorilla ammo did. It's their target ammo, 6.5 Creedmoor, 142 grain, Sierra Match King. In addition to that, this right here is representative of a box drill I ran with that Bushnell Nitro 4 to 16. So right here, this is my first group. I shot cold. If that's a flyer, whatever, it is what it is. But outside edge to inside edge on this, I'm looking at 0.94 inches. So even with that guy out there, still sub one minute. This right here is my second group. I dialed over 10. If we go center to center, we call that center. That right there is 3.4 inches. So I dialed over basically one mil. That's what we got. As far as these five rounds right here, uh, outside to inside edge, looking at right about 0.84. Not bad. Again, dialed down. We're gonna say center to center there. That right there is 3.5 inches. All right. Again, dialing down one mil. Right here, outside to inside. And that guy there looking at 0.89. Again, dialed left. I guess center to center, I don't know. Right in there, that is 3.56 inches. And then this last group, I don't know, I fell apart, but you get what you get. I don't know if that was a flyer or not, but that'd be my largest group at 1.31 inches. So is it indicative of the ammo or the rifle? Eh, probably more indicative of the shooter. But that's what I got with this ammo, and that's also what I got running the box drill. One last thing on the reticle, I think they kind of missed opportunity. If you're trying to range in a reticle, it's really nice to have 0.1 increments of mils, like really nice. And this, it's just 0 0.51, 0 0.52, and so that's what you're trying to range with. I would have loved to, if at the very top of basically the stadium lines, something along those lines, basically had a just one to 10, maybe over on the far right, again, one to 10 at 0.1 mil increments. I think it would lend a ton to this optic with respect to ranging, even though most people probably don't range. As far as optical clarity, it does a great job. Uh, honestly, is better than some of the optics that people are running at that four day precision rifle course, much more expensive optics, but no really pleased with it. As far as light transmission, it's done a good job for me. Been out doing some hunting with this setup, early morning, late evening, gathers plenty of light, allows you to see what you're trying to shoot. And yeah, overall really pleased with this. I think this is probably a pretty good optic if someone's looking to get into kind of that long range, maybe PRS game, you're not gonna dial on it. That might be a deal breaker for some, but they're cap turrets, there's no zero stop, not really made for it. But the mill deploy reticle, I will say, is really easy to use and it's pretty quick, especially when you learn it. Price-wise, MSRP, it's around 630, but street price, about 550. Places like Optics Planet, stuff like that. So if you're looking to build out a rifle, need an optic that can go out of ways, take a look at it. Stretch this guy out to 1,200 yards, and as long as you do your part, it will do its part. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Today,
the sweetness and the sorrow.